In a previous lesson, we developed the idea of empirical rate laws that are commonly of the form shown here, where a rate coefficient is multiplied by concentrations of the reactants, each raised to some power, usually but not always an integer. Such rate laws are so common that it is worth looking at three special cases that frequently occur. These cases all just have a single reactant in the rate law, just raised to a different integral power. These special cases are called, hopefully not surprisingly, zeroth order, first order, and second order reactions. In this lesson, we are going to look at each of these in a bit more detail. We will start with the first order reaction, and for simplicity, we will assume that the stoichiometric coefficient of species A is 1. We are also going to assume that A is the species whose concentration we are able to monitor, so we will write the rate in terms of that derivative. We are now going to do a bit of calculus. For this class, I'm not going to hold you responsible for doing this kind of calculus yourself. I'm only showing you the calculus so that you will know where the equations we are going to use come from. The first thing we are going to do is rearrange the equation so that everything having to do with the concentration of A is on the left and everything else is on the right. Now it may look a little strange to split up the derivative like this, but when solving differential equations of this type, it is perfectly fine to do that. Now we are going to integrate both sides. Our limits of integration are going to start at the initial time, zero, and go to whatever time we want, t. On the left-hand side, the limits will be the corresponding concentrations at those same times. So we start at our initial concentration, and we end at whatever concentration the sample happens to be at time t. The k is a constant, so we can move it outside the integral. And now, we integrate. The left-hand side becomes the natural log of the concentration, and the right-hand side becomes t. We plug in our limits and simplify. Take e to the power of each side and move the initial concentration to the right. We now have an expression for the concentration of species A at any time we want. Let's clean up the screen a bit, holding on to a few of the expressions, and slightly rearrange the bottom one. What we have now are three equivalent expressions. The original differential rate law, where we can see from the exponent that it is first order. We have the integrated rate law, and we have the linearized rate law. Let's look at them a bit more closely. If we plot the integrated rate law, we can directly see the concentration of reactant A going down with time. Changing the initial concentration changes where the plot starts, but the shape remains the same. Changing the rate coefficient changes how rapidly the reaction occurs. If we look at the linearized rate law, we can see that plotting the natural log of the concentration against time should give us a straight line with a slope of negative k and an intercept of the natural log of the initial concentration. And if we make that plot, we indeed see a straight line. Changing the initial concentration changes the intercept, as expected. Changing the rate coefficient changes the slope, as expected. Let's now take a look at a second order reaction. We're going to go through the same procedure as we did for the first order reaction. We start by rearranging, then integrating. We have the same limits as before. Again, the rate coefficient can be pulled out of the integral. When we integrate, our left-hand side is now different. We put in our limits. We make our linearized version. And finally, we solve for concentration. And cleaning up our workspace, we again have our differential rate law, our integrated rate law, and the linearized form. If we plot the concentrations as a function of time, we again see that the concentration of the reactant decreases with time, as expected. But if we compare the shape of this plot to the first order case, we can see that the second order plot is faster at early times and slower at late times. Changing the initial concentration again changes where the plot starts, but the shape stays the same and changing the rate constant again changes how fast the reactant disappears. Looking at our linearized version, we can see that plotting 1 over the concentration as a function of time should give us a straight line with a slope of k and an intercept of 1 over the concentration. That is indeed what we see. Changing the initial concentration changes the intercept, as expected, and changing the rate constant changes the slope, as expected. The last special case we are going to look at is the zeroth order reaction. This one is quite simple compared to the first order and second order cases. We rearrange the derivative, we integrate, again using the same limits, we move the rate coefficient out of the integral, we integrate, 
we plug in the limits, and we solve for the concentration. In this case, we are fortunate because the resulting equation is already linear. Just plotting concentration versus time gives us a straight line with a slope of negative k and an intercept of the initial concentration. Changing the initial concentration changes the intercept as expected, and changing the rate constant changes the slope as expected. Taking all of this together, we now have a way to quickly tell what order a reaction is if it is one of these three common types. We plot concentration versus time. If we get a straight line, it is zeroth order. If we don't, it's not. We plot natural log of concentration versus time. If we get a straight line, it is first order. If we don't, it's not. We plot one over concentration versus time. If we get a straight line, it is second order. If we don't, it's not.